Have you been wondering how to make the perfect air crete and get consistent results every time? Well, in this video, I'm gonna dive deep into the hows and the tools and the ingredients and exactly how you make air crete the dome guy away. And if you've been on YouTube at all, you'll see some people have more success than others. And there's some people that even have had a lot of failures and gotten frustrated and given up on air creep. But we've been making air creep with consistent success over and over again. And we've taught thousands of people how to do that in our in-person workshops. And so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process that we use to get consistent results every time. So the first thing that you're gonna need is three basic ingredients. You're gonna need Portland cement, water, and a foaming agent. The next thing, you're gonna need a few basic tools. The most important tool you're gonna to need is the foam generator, something like the Dragon XL. This is gonna make really, really high quality foam, which is the most important part of making aircrete successfully. The next thing you're gonna need is an air compressor. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is a mixer, and this is gonna be the mixer that's gonna mix the foam and the cement together. There are a lot of different mixers out there, but there's a few things that are really important. You want the foam to be injected as close to the mixing blades as possible to get a good mix because you can get not enough mix and you can get an over mix. The next thing is, is that the paddles of the mixer are very important. If you're using the wrong paddle mixer, it can cause you to kind of over mix and basically destroy the foam in the process. So you really want, need the right mixer with the right paddle. The Dome Gaia mixer, that's what's really great about it. It has a really good paddle on it, but it also injects the foam right at the paddle. So it mixes in really, really well. Now you're also gonna need a mixing bucket, and this is something to mix the aircrete in. And we generally use a 42 or 45 gallon trash can, but you can also use a 55 gallon barrel or really anything, but you want something with handles so that you can pick it up and then dump it into your forms. So that you got the mixing bucket. You're also gonna want a bucket for the foaming agent reservoir. This is what's gonna feed the Dragon XL. So this can be something small like a five gallon bucket, or you might want something larger like another 40 or 50 gallon container if you're gonna be making a lot of aircrete. You're also gonna want a few five gallon buckets. These are gonna be used for mixing your foaming agent in batches and for maybe collecting some of the foam while you're doing your tests. Next, you're gonna need a kitchen scale and you want one that's accurate so you can really get a good weight on your foam because getting the foam in the right density is very, very important. And by the way, if you wanna see what scale we use, you wanna go sign up for this free mini course. In the free mini course, we walk you through an entire spreadsheet of all the tools and the materials that we use to build an aircrete dome. And we have links to most of these in there. So you can go sign up for the free mini course and watch that. And I walk through every single tool and detail in the whole dome building process. So click the link in the description to go get that when you've finished watching this video. Now you're also gonna need some safety gear. This is gonna be like a dust mask and some eye protection and, and some gloves. The last thing that you're gonna need is some kind of form or mold to pour the aircrete in to make bricks. Dome Guy has designed and created some molds that work really well that you can check out on our website. Um, but they're also fairly easy to make just out of like two by material or, you know, six by material or plywood. So really there's lots of different ways to make molds for the bricks. In the Dome Builders Academy, we also have some instructions and plans on that, on how to make some DIY molds. And you can check that out in the link in the description as well. Okay, so now let's walk through the basic process. So the first part of the process is to mix up your foaming agent solution. Most foaming agents, whether it's the seventh generation dish detergent or some other um, professional foaming agents that we use come very, very concentrated. So each foaming agent is gonna have its different recommended amount to dilute it with water. And so you're gonna measure out the foaming agent and we usually do this in a really clean five gallon bucket. You wanna make sure there's no dirt in this. And so if you have a larger foaming agent bucket, you'll basically mix it up in batches of five gallons. One thing to note is a five gallon bucket isn't five gallons all the way to the top. It's about five and a half gallons all the way to the top. So it's usually the one of the lower rims that's exactly five gallons. But you're going to mix that up really well and then fill up your reservoir in with maybe five gallons, 10 gallons, 15 gallons, 30 gallons, however much you want to mix up. Then the next part of the process is going to be calibrating the Dragon XL. So what you're gonna do here is first, you're gonna turn on the Dragon XL until you have liquid coming out of the wand, and then you're gonna turn on the air. So, and then as soon as you have what looks like good quality foam coming out, and this is gonna come out pretty quickly, you're gonna fill up a quart, make sure there's no um, air gaps in there, and you're just gonna level off the top of that and put it on your kitchen scale. If you're using seventh generation, you're gonna want it to be between 90 
and 100 grams. If you're using our other professional foaming agents, some of them are as low as 40 grams. So then you're basically gonna adjust the pressure regulator on the Dragon XL up or down to increase or decrease the weight of the foam to get it dialed in to its recommended density. Once you've got it dialed into the recommended density, you're ready to start making the aircrete. Okay, so to start making aircrete, you're gonna first put your water in. So the basic recipe for seventh generation dish detergent is six gallons of water for a 94 pound bag of Portland cement. So you're gonna put your six gallons of water in your mixing bucket. Now, if you're using a different professional foaming agent, that recipe might be a little bit different. Hopefully you have a helper. It's a lot easier if you have two people doing this. You can do it by yourself, but again, two people is ideal. So the, your helper is gonna bring over your bag of Portland cement. And so you're gonna have the mixer already running. So the water is going around, the mixer is already running, and you're just gonna then open up that bag of cement and dump it in. And you can dump it in pretty quickly. If you know what you're doing and you've got a good mix and you're really going around, you've got the mixer running at full speed, you can dump that cement in. What you're trying to avoid is any kind of clumps. So if you're doing this for the first time, you probably wanna get like a stick or a trowel or something and just check to see if you have any clumps. Once you've done this a bunch of times, you'll be pretty confident on how you've got the mix to avoid clumps. And so you can be really quick at this. And now you're ready to go. And so now this time you can have your helper or you can do this where you've got your mixer going and you first again, flip on the pump and then within a few seconds, flip on the air and you've already calibrated your foam. So you know, it's ready to go. And then you just start mixing that in. And you really wanna keep the mixer as low to the bottom as possible for as long as possible. As it fills up, you have to raise the mixer up a little bit so that it doesn't get completely submerged. But you're basically gonna fill that up. If it's a 45 gallon tank, you're gonna fill it up to a couple inches of the top. That's about 42 gallons. And then you're gonna turn off the Dragon XL. Make sure you turn off both the liquid and the air at the same time. And then maybe just do a little final mixing, just really make sure that the mix is in there, maybe go up and down a little bit. Um, what you don't wanna have is any foam that's not mixed in. Now, a little tip here, if you wanna check your mix, you can actually check the density of your wet at the top and the bottom. So take a quart bucket and check the density, and then you can carry the bucket over, fill up your forms, and maybe before you've completely emptied it, you can get another sample and check that density they should be really pretty similar. If they're very different, then if it's a lot heavier in the bottom, then you didn't get a good mix. And so that's, again, when you're first doing this, that's a good thing to do to just double check that you're doing a proper mix. So that's really the whole process. And then you just repeat. You dump more water into the bucket, dump in another bag, and repeat. So the question is, how long does it take to make a batch of aircrete? Timed, our instructor Gabe, who's been doing this a long time, he had three helpers. One helper doing the bag of cement, one helper doing water, so the water was already filling up, and, an and then another helper to help trowel in. So two people to dump in, one person to trowel. So they could do a batch of aircrete every three minutes. It was This was a very fast process, but they filled, they did 10 batches in about 35 minutes and filled up all the forms. Most people aren't that fast when they first start, but this is a good process to see. Okay, but what are the, some of the things that can go wrong when you're making aircrete? Because there are some things that can go wrong. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of the common mistakes and issues that people run into when making aircrete. So you can avoid them and be successful in your first batch. Okay, so the first thing is incorrect foam density. This is the most common where people just didn't have a good scale or something and they didn't get their foam density dialed in. So it's always a good idea also to check your foam density after you've made the batch. So this is after you've made a few batches, go back and check just to make sure things are still dialed in. Okay, the next thing is if it's really cold, this can actually be a problem. Now this problem can be avoided a little bit by using professional foaming agents, but when you're using dish detergent, the cold weather and really cold water can slow the curing process and the bubbles don't stay along, around long enough for the cement to cure. So there's a couple ways you can solve this. One, and the, the best way is really just to use warm water if you can. If you can use hot water when you mix the cement and hot water in your foaming agent solution, this will keep the process curing fast enough to avoid the cold. You also wanna be sure to cover the aircrete and because this will keep any of the heat inside while it's curing. Definitely avoid making aircrete if it's gonna be below freezing temperatures. 
Okay, another problem that people don't think about is electrical problems. And so if you're using really long extension cords to power your equipment, you can get what's called a voltage drop when your air compressor turns on or the larger loads turn on, and this can mess things up. So for this reason, the simplest way to avoid this is to make sure that your Dragon XL is connected into its own dedicated circuit. It's running on its own extension cord. And so that other things running aren't gonna mess that up. In our Air Creek Quick Start course and the Dome Builders Academy, we go into a lot more depth on the voltage problems and things like that. So you might wanna check that out. But the easiest way to avoid this, like I mentioned, is just to run the Dragon XL on a dedicated circuit and a dedicated extension cord. Okay, so another niche issue is either not mixing enough or mixing too much. And this can also come into play if you're using the wrong mixing paddle on a mixer. So if you're not using the Dome Gaia mixer, um, you just wanna make sure that you have a mixing paddle that has this helix pattern. There's other types of mixing blades out there that will not do a good job. And what they'll do is they'll basically destroy the foam in the process of mixing. Okay, another one that a lot of people don't think about is bad cement. If bags of cement sit around for a long time, they can absorb moisture, and this can cause the cement to prematurely cure or the chemical reaction to basically kick off before you've made your aircrete. One of the ways that you'll know that your cement is bad is the bags can be hard to the touch, they're not soft, and when you pour the cement, cement out, it can pour out kind of crumbly and have almost like little rocks in it. If that's the case, you've probably got bad cement, most hardware stores or suppliers will take back bad bags of cement. So if you find out that your cement is bad, take it back. When you're buying your cement, just check it. Make sure the bag feels soft and it doesn't feel really hard. So that really covers most of the issues that people run into. If you have any other questions about Aircrete and how it's used and its properties, be sure to check out this other video that we did that goes into a lot of detail on exactly what Aircrete is, its properties, when to use it, when not to use it, and we answer a lot of questions there. But if you have any other questions, like always, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks so much.